everyone, Reefer Gill here. In today's video, we're going to do a water test on this 100 gallon rimless tank. It's about the only thing that did not leak. I'll show you what I mean. If you've been following along, you know that I've recently plumbed this system after waiting about five months for the custom sump to arrive. If you missed the plumbing video, a link to that will be down below in the description. I started off by obviously adding water. I pulled in my garden hose and started filling up the tank. After looking at this tank empty for the past six months, I have to say I was pretty excited to finally see some water inside of it. As I waited for the tank to fill, the water finally made it to the overflow. I had a single towel ready to go. Being realistic, I knew I'd have a leak or two. It's inevitable. I heard that sweet sound of water flowing down the drains into the sump. I didn't even bother trying to tune the siphon. After going so long without a system, the sound of splashing water in my living room was a much welcome sound. I waited for the sump to fill up with water and fired up the Apex Core 20 pump for the very first time. I believe it was on 100% intensity. Either way, it definitely seemed to be pushing some serious water and the pump was dead silent. Let's not distract from this week's video, the Core 20 pump deserves a video all on its own. I walked around to the back side of the tank and I immediately saw small puddles of water on the floor. Forcing myself not to panic, I reached for the towel to clean it up. As I started to follow PVC runs, I started finding a lot of leaks. At this point, I admittedly started panicking. There were leaks everywhere. It wasn't long before I started hollering for my wife to bring me more towels. The fastest leak was coming from the top of the union on this ball valve for the return from my water making station for water changes. No matter how much I tightened the union, it was still gushing out water. I had to stop and drain the water so that the water level was below the return nozzle. Once I did that, I unscrewed the union and wouldn't you know it, the o-ring was missing which is ironic since this is one of the pieces of advice that I gave viewers in the video I did for plumbing up the system was to always check for unions that were missing o-rings. Well maybe I should heed my own advice next time. Once I replaced the o-ring the leak stopped here. Moving forward the one and a half inch unions for the primary and secondary drain would not stop leaking. You'll see me hand tighten the unions then give the camera a victory thumbs up. The thumbs up was actually fake news. The leak slowly continued well after I thought I had fixed it. I had to take a pair of pliers to wrench down on the unions. I was really nervous doing this because the other end of the PVC run was connected directly to the pre-installed bulkheads of the overflow. The unions only turned about a quarter inch but it did the job. One and a half inch bulkhead leaks were resolved. The next big problem area were the unions connected to the check valve on the left side of the tank. This issue was quickly resolved by hand tightening the unions. I let the tank sit with water for several hours. I just didn't trust that the leaks were over with. The last thing I want to do is call it all good, prepare the tank with sand, rock, and salt water. Once this tank is up against the wall, I'll have little to no access to the rear pipes. After a couple hours, I walked behind the tank and wouldn't you know it, new leaks. Two streaks of water coming from the nuts that connect the internal weir with the external overflow. Can a guy get a break here? These nuts were as tight as I can get them by hand. I used plumber's pliers and gave each nut a slight turn. I wiped off the two streaks of water and let the tank sit for another hour or so. I thought I was in the clear, then I saw a dark spot between the rear overflow and the back of the tank. I placed my finger on the dark spot and a trickle of water ran down the back of the tank from the overflow. At this point, I'm losing hope I can fix these leaks. I grabbed my pliers and nervously tightened down the nut. The last thing I wanted to do was break this overflow. I was able to turn the nut ever so slightly. I wiped off the drip of water and waited. The next day, the back of the tank was clear of any leaks. During my battle with the leaks behind the tank, I did notice a droplet of water on a T-fitting connected to my manifold. I figured it was just from splashing water into the sump. A couple hours later, I noticed a droplet of water in the same exact location. A closer inspection of the PVC run connected to the T-fitting revealed it was never even glued. The PVC was still dry fit to the T-fitting. I was actually surprised it leaked so slowly for never having been glued. This was actually going to be a quick and easy fix. Why you ask? Because I used lots of unions. I unscrewed the unions and removed the PVC from the PVC clamp. I took the piece of manifold downstairs and glued in the PVC. I remeasured and everything looked good to go. I reinstalled the manifold and allowed the glue to set before testing it out. 
After running the water test over the course of another day or so, I felt pretty confident I took care of the leaks. There was another issue I did notice. I had installed these silicone hoses for my bucketless water changing system. That system is explained in my previous plumbing video. As I started to drain the water, I noticed if I had the uh, valves wide open, the silicone hose would collapse on itself. The rushing water created like some sort of vacuum effect inside the hose causing it to collapse. If I slowed down the water flow coming out of the drain, then the hose would take its natural round shape again. It would have probably been fine and I was leaning towards leaving it as is. But in the end, I decided to use some spare nylon braided hose that I had to replace the soft silicone hose. I'm glad that I used unions on either side of that manifold. Without them, I would have had to cut the plumbing and potentially buy more expensive ball valves. Oddly, unions were the main source of my leak issues. So long as they have the required O-rings, tightening them down easily resolves the issue. Most unions only require to be hand tightened. The one and a half inch unions were an exception. So that will do it for this video. If you're new to the channel and would like to follow along with this 100 gallon build and the 20 gallon nano system, please subscribe to the channel. Please hit that like button if you guys like this video. And for real time updates, follow me on Instagram. Thanks again for watching and we will see you guys next time.